Joining me now is a UFC bandweight fighter who is set to take on Cody Stamen at UFC 216 on October 7th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Please welcome Tom, the fire kid Duke, and to the program for the very first time. Tom, how's it going? Everything is perfect. Thanks for welcoming me. Excellent. Thank you very much for the time. It is much appreciated. Now, I got to ask, this is going to be your first MMA fight in Las Vegas, of course, the, the, you know, the, the fighting capital in the world. How cool is that? I mean, is this your first trip to Vegas or have you been there before? Yeah, I think as an MMA fighter, we all we all dream to to fight one day in uh, in Las Vegas, like in Madison Madison Garden in uh, in New York as well, you know. So it's a uh, it's a little bit of a of a dream that uh, that comes true, you know, next week, and uh, I can't wait. Actually. So you're 15 and one with one no contest, and uh, you, you're one and zero in the UFC. You de- you debuted against Patrick Williams uh, this past April uh, at a UFC on Fox show. You got the second round knockout. Really impressive performance. You were, of course, a big favorite. Super hyped going in. Um, are you are you surprised you didn't make it to the UFC sooner? You have been fighting really high level competition outside. Um, you were the two division Bama champion. You fought Shea Walsh. Um, a number of really good fighters. Yet the UFC did not sign you, and you were so hyped up. Are you surprised it took you sixteen pro fights to get to the big leagues? No, actually the the. The, we have a long-term relationship with the UFC. Um, they they tried to sign me uh, since the age of 19, but uh, the the, my, the the goal at that time was for me to capitalize um, all I can in practicing different sports and uh, bring my uh, MMA level up. So um, I was I was more like, uh, yeah, we should wait a little bit more. I want I want to bring you guys the best entertainment, and in order to do it, I need to be at my best level. So let's wait. So we were we were giving each other some news, and uh, finally at 23, uh, I felt that was a good moment for me to enter in the octagon, and uh, that's uh, how things uh, happened. Now, five years later, do you think you made the right decision to wait five years? You know, uh, debuting at 19 years old, you were super young, and, and I'm sure you've gotten much better. Do you definitely, you know, feel like you made the right decision five years ago? I think so. There is a, a, a an American expression that says, uh, when you're ready to be a professional, you can go amateur. When you're ready to uh, to go to the USC, you can go professional. And uh, when you are ready to for the USC bell, you can turn uh, in the USC, so you can sign with the USC. And I always try to manage my career um, with this expression, you know. Uh, so always trying to have one step in advance in order to manage uh, that every, everything. You know, everything can happen in a fight, but uh, always trying to be at your best level for that fight. Not not just ready, but very ready. Did the UFC try and get you to sign with the UFC since that five years? Of course, before you actually did sign with them earlier this year. Have they made multiple offers, or was it just five years ago when you were 19, and then earlier this year when you actually did sign with them? No, uh, we, we, so we, we had a first contact, uh, first meeting, first uh, Skype uh, appointment too, and, uh, and uh, I was very clear from the very beginning. And then after each fight, uh, we were like, okay, so you feel you feel good now. We should, should we do it now? You need more time. No, I was more more about thinking about uh, each other's uh, needs um, and create a long term vision, a long term plan for for you and me. And uh, and that's what happened. You know, so that was the kind of conversation we had, trying to be uh, trying to be always set, you know, always linked, like. What do you need now? You need more? Yeah, you need more. Okay, see you in a few months. It seems like you have a good relationship with the UFC. You, as you said, you've had a long-term relationship already for a number of years um, throughout, you know, your Bama run and 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 your fights outside of the UFC. But you know, how, you know, do you feel like you you do have a better better relationship with the UFC? Because a lot of fighters, you know, who speak out and and you know try and get a fighter unions and fighter pay, they talk about that. They don't have great relationships. Yeah, it's true. Uh, for for I speak for my uh, for, for 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 me, everything is well. We have good relationship. You know, uh, it is a it is a it is a business. So sometimes, uh, as we we get in that sports and we we think that yeah, but sports values wise, you should do this or do this or do this. But uh, actually, if it's um, for me, it's all good. You know, because I. Uh, maybe one of the different is that I manage my career professionally from the very beginning. So um, ultimately, when you get to a point to sign with uh, one of the 
bigger entity uh, in the world, you have to adapt your, your dialogue. You don't you don't speak anymore to a coach or to a, to a, to an MMA team somewhere uh, where you've been. You know, it's more you, you speak to someone that is uh, that is big. So you need to adapt your dialogue, and that's why maybe uh, happens sometimes, and the fighters they feel a little bit uh, disappointing or, or on something. You know, but uh, for me, everything is well. Good relationship. We we have the same uh, vision on, uh, on 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 different things on evolving together. Um, so for me, it's, uh, it's all good. Excellent. Well, let's talk about your debut. In April, you defeated Patrick Williams, as I already said, by second round TKO. You looked phenomenal. Were you happy with the win? And, and you know, Williams, he was hurt badly going into that second round, but he, he did get his own, you know, his, his fair share, share of shots, and you didn't come in or, or walk out completely unscathed, although it was a relatively dominant win. You know, despite that, were you happy? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, um, there is a, a subtle point I want, I want to clarify is, is that in, um, I am happy about that fight, about that fight, but not proud about that fight. Um, I feel keeping that state, uh, that the, 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 keeping that, uh, that vision on things keeps you humble and keeps you uh, evolving. You know, so I am happy because. That was a good performance. First time you were etc. And uh, that was a good uh, that, that was a good uh, way to to finish the fight. But not proud in a way that, for sure, there is a mistakes and uh, a lot of stuff. Thanks to Pat- Patrick Williams, I, I've learned. That was uh, the opportunity for me to see uh, where my uh, wrestling level was at. Uh, how do I react against a very powerful and explosive fighter? He ha- he had a long reach. His experience. He's strong, you know. You see the difference of body we have, and um, so I keep thinking. I, uh, in my mind, I see things like that. He brings me difficulties. Yeah. Thanks to him, uh, I bring my level up. Uh, capitalizing on the mistakes I did during the fight, because there is always mistakes and there is always good points. So that's what happened. So yeah. How beneficial was it to have that fight and, and learn from that fight? As you said, you took away the fact that, you know, he, he, he got you down. You know, you're, I'm sure you're working on your takedown defense uh, more and more. Um, and your next opponent, again, a wrestler. Cody Stamen is really good on the mat. He's really good at takedowns. We saw that in, in his debut in July. Um, how, how beneficial is it to debut against someone like Patrick Williams where you got tested in the takedown department? And, and here we go again. You're, you're fighting another wrestler. I, I am very, uh, I'm, I am very uh, used to uh, to fight against that type of opponent. Especially right now in the U.S., you know, there are a lot of people uh, are wrestlers, boxers. Um, and since uh, my first years in Bama, I'm used to I'm used to fight against wrestlers. Um, Patrick Williams was a, was definitely a good test. Now I have Cody Hammond. Um They have a different physique, same size but different reach, different. Uh, Different, uh, different shape of uh, of body, uh, but uh, they are both really good. I think Cody will be uh, will be coming 100% ready everywhere in all uh, in all the areas of the fight, and um, it's going to bring me uh, fame. It's going to bring me uh, um, boxing. It's going to bring me uh, wrestling shoots. So it's uh, it's the opportunity for me to see once again where is my level at. What did I uh, what did I improve? What should I work more after that? Fight? So um, I, I can wait. I'm used to that kind of fight, and at the same time, it's always a pleasure to uh, to to see where you at and uh, and uh, what he has to offer me. Do you think fans in that Patrick Williams fight almost, you know, had too high of expectations for you? And I think a lot of people looked at you in, as some invincible fighter. But, in, you know, in reality, you're a fantastic fighter and you, you were a big favorite against Williams for good reason. But everybody is human. You did get hit. And, and I feel like some people were almost thinking like you would you would knock him out in 30 seconds and, and walk away completely with no marks, no blood, anything. Do you feel like people, fans, had almost too high of expectations? Expectations for you. You know the, the, the reason why uh, Patrick uh, was so tired uh, at the end of the first round, and I KO'd him at the second round is because I, I was uh, I was having a um, a very uh, a big pace on him, you know, trying to go forward. So going forward, it's a little bit more risky than staying in your stand. So that's the kind of uh, risk. I'm uh, I'm used to take, and uh, I'm do. Uh, that's what I'm doing well. 
in order to have a good performance. It can be uh, there, you know, there is no. It's a, it's such, it's such a rare thing to step into the cage and KO the guy and leave in 30 seconds, and you don't have a, you don't even have a mark on your on your face. I feel like it's one person of the fight. So, so yeah, I, I'm not focused. Maybe you re, you read just you, you read things like this on the internet, but uh, it's not it's not what I see when, when I think about that last fight. Right now, do you does this upcoming fight with Stamen feel a bit different? Because it is your second UFC fight, your your first fight, your debut. There there might have been a bit of octagon jitters. You can talk about that if you wish. Does this feel different? Because you've already been here. You you know how UFC fight week works. You you've been on the big stage already in April. Does this feel different? And do you think you'll be a bit more calm going in? The funny thing is that the the, the US the last UFC fight uh, last April. That was the that, that was the fight I felt the more relaxed ever, uh, considering Bama. Uh, from all the fights, I, w- I, w- I was uh, I was thinking being a little a, li- a little bit more uh, stressed, but that was actually the the fight uh, I was the more relaxed. Um, I think it's big, it's because USC is such a professional. Uh, uh, company, uh, everything is smooth during the fight week. Everything is uh, professional. Everything is uh, fluent. Everything goes easy. You know, it's very fluid, and um, and um, I, that's what I felt. And I think that's the reason why I was so relaxed. And uh, as I uh, as I, as as there is a sensation of deja vu for that next fight because I did it already. I think I, I, I have all the reasons. To think that uh, I'm going to be uh, even more relaxed than last time. Now, a lot of people have incredibly, as I said already, you know, high expectations for you. Do you think you are the number one bantamweight prospect in the world? Do you think, you know, people think you are the next title challenger and maybe a champion? I know you're young. I know you're new, you know, in, in the UFC. But do you think, would you consider yourself the number one bantamweight prospect in, in MMA right now? No, for for me, the, the 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 my main thing is to be focused on the on my MMA results, on my uh, on my personal life, having fun. You know, I, I'm not that much into uh, saying to myself, I'm the best. I am the best prospect. Uh, sure, I, I consider the, all the all all what I see on the internet, all the articles saying that I'm the number one prospect, etc. It is it is a good thing for me. It it makes me it makes me happy because it it shows me that I am uh, that I am on the right path. But more 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 to be the world number one prospect. I, I just want to be the world number one. So I'm focused on this. The rest is very encouraging. It's a it's a it's, a, it's good news for me. But it's, uh, it's it's not kind of stuff I am focused on. Now, I know you're not necessarily talking about this, or maybe you don't even think this. Maybe this hasn't crossed your mind. But I, I really think you have the potential because right now with Conor McGregor, you know, just having fought Mayweather, and we don't know when he's going to fight in, in the octagon again. Ronda Rousey is practically retired. There There isn't a big, huge star in the UFC right now. We've seen that because the pay-per-view buys have been a, lit, a little lower in 2017. The UFC had great years in 2015, 2016. Not so great this year. Do you feel like, and, and I know you're a humble guy, clearly, you know, considering your last answer, but do you feel like you could be that guy to to attract a casual audience? You, you know, you have a good personality. You're exciting to watch. you feel like you could be a big star in the UFC one day? Uh, th- thanks for the kind of words. It, it shows me that you believe in me. Uh, uh, once again, you know, business-wise, if I can represent that type of person, I will do it with with pleasure. Uh, and even more, if I can, if I can help, if I can, uh, if I can uh, be uh, uh, that uh, influence. If I, can, if I can have a big influence, I will use it for 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 trying to legalize the MMA in France because we have a lot of good people over there. Good, we have high level. It's a land of martial arts. I level in MMA, and one of the good, uh, one of the things that uh, that is in my heart is well, obviously one day to fight in Paris, and um, and why why not uh, from now trying to develop uh, the the more I can uh, MMA. So that's one uh, well, that's one of the things I would like to develop too. One thing I do want to ask you about that, and unfortunately I'm not super familiar with the situation with MMA being illegal in your home country of France, but can you sort of update me? Are there people trying to get it legalized, and is it sort of, you know, the government stopping it? What is what is the latest? Is is it close to being legalized or not at all? 
few years ago people has a people had a bad image of MMA now everything is everything is uh, everything is good we have a good image the people uh, they are aware that uh, that the UFC is not is no more the UFC that we, it used to be at the very beginning uh, it's a professional sport uh, practiced by professional and surrounded by professional superv super, supervised by professional so um, people are aware about that now it's more a question of um, um, what I should say. It's a, it's a struggling question. Like it's a power struggle, you know, because they are aware if MMA is coming, uh, a lot of uh, the, the, the a lot of guys from the a lot of practi practitioners from the judo federation would go to the MMA. You know, that's the thing they are afraid of. So in order for this not to happen, they um, they uh, they work. A lot on uh, lobbies, lobby, lobbying um, against the development of MMA. So it's still stuck because of that at the moment. And also, there is uh, one thing in the French mentality is that we always have uh, 10, 15 years uh, late. We we have we have an amazing country, very cultural, um, very beautiful, everything you want. But uh, on the new technology, on the new practice, on the new on the new fashion things, on on a lot of points, we we are always a little bit late. It's because we, you know, we so it's all country. The the the, the countries from the old continent, on continent, we, we we are a little bit like this. But I think it's gonna come because um, ultimately, a judo federation will understand that um, MMA is complementary to judo, and uh, MMA doesn't doesn't want to take to take to take everything over. They just want to develop. Because um, at the end of the day, when you do MMA, when, when, you, when you practice every day, you go to wrestling to have the benefits of the wrestling for your practice. You go to boxing to have the benefits of, um, of the boxing in your MMA. And also you go to judo because you want to have a little bit more of judo in your style. So it's complementary and they are, they are afraid for the, for the bad reasons, unfortunately. Um, another question is, the UFC, do you think they will build you up slowly? Do you think they'll give you not easy fights, but, you know, definitely give you a path where, you know, um, they're, they're building you up slowly and, and not giving you top 10 opponents right away. You're still new in the UFC. You're, you're very doomed. Or would you rather be given top 10 opponents, you know, as soon as possible? So it's a pain, it's a it's a feeling question, you know. It's the same question that in Bama. Uh, I want to take my time doing the things step by step. A lot of things going on for me right now, you know, transition to the US, etc. So it's a lot of work for me. Um, MMA is my main thing, but I have other projects too. Um, yeah, I, I will do the thing step by step. You know, I, I don't think there is an easy find because once you once USC signed you. Uh, you are in the you are you are usually in the top 50 so top 50 fighters in the world they are all dangerous there is no easy fights really so I'm gonna do the thing step by step uh, and uh, following my uh, my uh, my business expectations uh, trying to manage things thinking about the long term plan and not just uh, trying to reach the bell the the, the, the faster possible it's a feeling question uh, and I will be uh, I will be able to tell you more about this in a few months when the, when the fight is gonna be over. Right now, you're living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, full time now, correct? Yes, I mean I'm living. Uh, I'm living in Albuquerque for the for the fight, you know. Uh, so I do my whole camp in Albuquerque. So I have an apartment in Albuquerque, but I still have my apartment in Paris, and uh, and I do a lot of uh, business trip actually. So I don't really know where I live anymore. But when it's uh, when it's camp time i am in albuquerque full time then uh, i like to take vacation a little bit everywhere and uh, always coming by uh, paris for for a few weeks too sure of course training at jackson wink how has that been um one of the best gyms in the world i i would imagine you have learned a lot already and i would imagine that uh, it, it has paid off tremendously and also the transition to the u.s how difficult has that been so how difficult has the transition been you know moving away from your family during your camp and also training at jackson wink how is that going well, the, the 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 good thing at Jackson is that they are very open-minded, and they let me uh, bring my father, and they bring me my trainers, uh, my physical preparation coach from Paris, my my head coach, uh, the man of shadow that uh, who lives in Paris too. So actually, the last two months 
all of those people, they all come into Jackson. So I can have benefits from the structure in Albuquerque. It's an amazing facility with a big uh, cages, etc. Everything we need surrounded by um, all the sparring partners I need, high-level sparring partners, and also surrounded by, um, you know, Coach Greg Jackson, Coach Mike Winkleton, I have Rafael Freitas, that is uh, one of the more dangerous guys on the on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Lenny Lovato, we have amazing uh, uh, wrestling coach as well. So um, I, I try to create my own camp to, to, to have a precise work, you know, craftsmanship, um, be in one of the best uh, place for sparring and coaching and at the same time um, enjoying uh, the, the all that uh, makes me uh, all that makes me the person I am today physical preparation my head coach so everything is reunited everything is together for me to be uh, uh, at my best level Excellent. Now, you mentioned you have some projects outside of fighting you'd like to partake in, and uh, and uh, to my understanding, a couple of things you'd like to do. One, um, you know, really big in your life is, is fashion and modeling. Uh, you, you, of course, post pictures all the time of yourself, and, and you know, it's, it's really fantastic just that you have something outside of fighting that you can actually make money from and do and, and gain publicity from. As, has modeling been something you do all your life or, or have done all your life, or is it somewhat new? And to just talk Talk about you know how 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 you know how much do you like modeling? How how is it in general? No, I, I like it. It's uh, it's for, for, it's uh, the certain thing is that it's something that I want to develop in my career um, even more than I previously uh, did. Um, but since the age of eighteen, you know, it started it starts it started by uh, by just doing uh, modeling for MMA brand, you know. Uh, little by little, I was working with uh, photographs in Paris, and we developed uh, my book. We developed a few pictures, you know, and the people uh, liked the style, you know, having a, um, a, an MMA fighter at the same time, someone who likes to travel, and at the same time, someone uh, that is uh, that, that that used to be good at school, you know, to everything everything reunited in, uh, in in one person. I think the the photograph that's what they they were telling me. So. That's what uh, that's what they wanted to develop on the pictures, and um, for example, the last year I, I've been doing the last uh, Nikon campaign in Europe, you know, for, uh, for, for 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 their project. I, I think you, you saw it on the social media. Uh, what I've been doing else? Uh, I've been doing the the fashion uh, the fashion week at Paris too. I was representing a vegan brand, you know, having some shoes, doing some uh, doing some. Um, uh, you know when you a defile when you go when you walk um, when you walk in front of people and uh, you know something like that you know I like to to walk with different photo, photo, photographs uh, around the world too the, the the traveling pictures is something I like to uh, I like to develop so um, yeah I, I, I definitely want to develop that that point in my career and uh, uh, different opportunities uh, are coming day after day and uh, I'm trying to to do what I like because it's uh, I think it's very interesting, you know, and it's completely linked to my uh, pleasure, to my uh, work uh, that is uh, fighting in MMA. Now, one last thing that you like to do in your spare time, uh, I understand, is to write. You, you love writing, and it, it sounds like you love reading as well. Um, the writing, specifically, is that something you just do for fun? Just, you know, doing your downtime when you're not training, when you're not doing something else? You like to sit down and write a little bit, right? You know, what do you write about? And also, can you take this further? Can you t- make more of a career out of this? Would you like to write a book one day? Could you publish something? Or is this all just for fun? I have a... I have a... A, liter- a French literary and a philosophy uh, degree. Um, right after, uh, I didn't have the occasion to to, to continue in it because the goal uh, at that time, when I was uh, 18, that was to just go to Paris and doing MMA. But uh, still, I was uh, still practicing, uh, still uh, studying uh, philosophy. And uh, it comes from uh, it comes from the fact that I am a, a perfectionist person. You know, uh, when I when I'm doing a camp, I write everything on the paper. I make the paper evolve. Uh, from uh, one session to another, so um, it comes from there. You know, I, I like to write things. I like to be organized. And uh, years after years, I, I kind of develop my own method for for, for the fight. You know, um, at the same time, I was uh, I was speaking different languages, um, analyzing different culture. I live a little bit everywhere in the world, and uh, I wanted to synthesize uh, all that has been uh, discovered in life and uh, do and uh, putting in in one method. 
So um, I, I signed a few months ago with uh, Amphora. Amphora is the main uh, uh, sports editionist in France. So we we are set for one book. Then that is going to be released probably uh, um, in April or, or May. Next, wow, congratulations. Uh, next April, May, so next year. Yeah, so uh, I'm currently writing the book. So it will be about how to prepare a fight, how to get in an MMA fight uh, with an underlies that we say um, my method, uh, how I success, uh, how how to get the the win when you when you have a when you when you have to do a preparation in order to prepare a fight. So um, you know, I, I'm developing this, you know, uh, and I'm putting a little bit of uh, what I like uh, in life in in the book. So actually, there will be one. Uh, the first part will be on the the pure uh, technique technique aspect. So what I like to do. The second part would be on the adaptation. So the game plan, uh, how to analyze your opponent, how to develop a game plan against your opponent, how to uh, structure your training in order to develop the game plan against your opponent, and uh, eventually a third part that uh, that would speak more about what I like to do. So um, a focus on uh, philosophy, a focus on perfectionism, how I develop uh, the, 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 the training and how I put perfectionism that can help right away for the fight in my uh, in in my uh, schedule um also there is a focus on um sophrology that i like to explore that i like to work on too and uh, also hypnosis you know all the mental approach for the fight like uh, visualization and um also i speak a little bit um, about the diet you know the way i do it uh, a lot of people would be uh, would be helping me in, in the book the people that uh, contrib- contribute to my success, so very legit people. And, uh, yeah, so men- mental, physical aspects too, and, uh, and the diet, uh, which is a, an important point in MMA. So that, uh, that would be my first book. So that's my first book. That's my uh, first book that I'm writing right now. And uh, then uh, I would like to develop another one. I already have a, another idea in mind, but it would be for later next year. Awesome, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, that that was really cool, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to it. My last question for you: October seventh, we're just a, a week and a half away. How do you get the job done? You're taking on Cody Stamen at UFC two sixteen. Oh, you know, my prediction is that I don't do prediction, <laughs> but you can expect me at two hundred percent of my level. You know, I've been working a lot for that thing. I know everybody's working a lot, but. Uh, I am a perfectionist, and I uh, and I, my level is up uh, since the last fight. Uh, thanks to the thanks to Patrick Williams, by, by the way. And uh, yeah, you can expect me 100% here, always there to put on the show as usual. Awesome. Before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media, and if there's anybody you would like to thank or give a shout out to, the floor is yours. I'm gonna do a complex thank to uh, to uh, right after the fight, so I don't need to do it ten times. And uh, what was the second question? Just social media and thank yous and shout outs, anything. Last words. Yeah, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Tom Firekid.